Welcome to WP Mail SMTP, the most popular SMTP and PHP mailer for WordPress. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix your site's email deliverability issues by setting up WP Mail SMTP with SendGrid. Email deliverability is probably the biggest and most common issue that WordPress users face on a day-to-day -day basis. This includes important emails either ending up in a user spam folder or not being delivered at all. The best way to fix this issue is to authenticate your site's emails using SMTP and selecting a specific mailer option to help you deliver your emails reliably each and every time. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Before we get started, you'll need to make sure you have a SendGrid account. If not, you can head over to their website to get started with a free account. After you've gotten your account set up, the first thing you'll need to do is create your sender identity. In SendGrid, you can create a single sender to set up an approved sender email address, or you can authenticate your site's domain. While you can get the SendGrid integration up and running by setting up the approved sender email address, we recommend authenticating your domain instead to ensure email delivery. Regardless, let's go over both methods, starting with adding a single sender. To get started, sign into your SendGrid account and click on the Create Identity button. Fill out the required fields and click the Create button when you're done. You should then get a confirmation message containing a link that you can click on to finish setting up your single sender identity. Now let's go over authenticating your domain in SendGrid. The benefit of authenticating your domain is that it proves that emails are coming from a domain you actually own. It also helps to grow your domain's reputation as a legitimate email source so that messages sent to your customers won't be automatically counted as spam. From the dashboard, scroll down and click on the Authenticate Domain button, or go to the left sidebar and click on Settings, Sender Authentication. On the following page, you'll need to answer the following two questions. In the first question, Select your DNS provider from the available list. If you don't see it, choose Other Host Not Listed. For the second question, we recommend selecting Yes. This will allow any links in the email sent from your site to use your own domain rather than SendGrids. Once you've answered both questions, click the Next button. In the next step, you'll need to enter your site's domain. Afterwards, click on Advanced Settings to make a few adjustments. Unclick the box called Use Automated Security, check the box called Use Custom Return Path, and add a subdomain in the Return Path field. Normally, a website's address is something like www.example.com. A subdomain will replace the www part and replace it with something else. These are typically used to add separate sections or directories to your site, similar to how some websites will also have a blog, and the address will be blog.example.com. We recommend using sg as the subdomain if you don't have anything specifically in mind. Once you've typed in the subdomain, click Next. The following page will display the DNS records you'll need to add to your site's DNS settings. Let's go through adding one of the records to our DNS settings as an example. Open a new tab and log into the service where you purchased your site's domain. This is often your site's hosting provider, and find your site's DNS settings. Each DNS settings page will look different depending on your provider, but regardless, there should be an option to add new records. Click the option to add a new record and specify what type of record it's going to be. Tab back to SendGrid, copy the host value, and go back to your DNS settings and paste it into the host name or name field. Go back to SendGrid, copy the text in the value column, and paste it into the value column in your DNS settings. You may also see a column in your DNS settings called TTL, which stands for Time to Live. If you can change this, we recommend setting it to 1 day or 86,400 seconds. After you've finished adding all the records to your DNS settings, go back to SendGrid and on the dashboard check the box called I have added these records, then click the Verify button. It can take up to 48 hours for SendGrid to verify your records, so you may need to come back and check on this at a later time. Once the verification is completed, you should see a success message. The next step is to generate an API key. Starting from your SendGrid dashboard, go to Email API on the left sidebar and then select Integration Guide. On the next page, choose the SMTP Relay option, then on the next page, click the Create Key button. This will create an API key for you. Keep this tab open 
and open a new tab to log into your WordPress site, then head over to the settings page of WP Mail SMTP. We're now going to configure our mailer settings. Scroll down to see the following two fields, from email and from name. In the from email field, you can use any email address that uses the same domain we verified in SendGrid. We also recommend checking the box labeled Force from Email as this will make sure all emails sent from your site will be coming from this same address. In the From Name field, feel free to write in any name you'd like. You can also select the Force From Name field if you'd like this to be applied to all emails site-wide. In the Mailer section, select SendGrid. You should then see two additional fields appear, API key and sending domain. Tab back to your SendGrid account, copy the API key, and paste it into the API key field in WP Mail SMTP. The sending domain is optional. If you'd like to take advantage of this, simply type in the subdomain you created in SendGrid. When you're done, click the Save Settings button at the bottom of the page. To make sure everything is working properly, let's send out a test email. Click on the Tools tab under WP Mail SMTP on the left side menu to be taken to the email test page. In the Send To field, you can enter whatever email address you have access to to receive the test email. When you're done, click Send Email. When the test email has been sent, check your inbox to find the newly arrived message. And that's all there is to it. You now know how to set up WP Mail SMTP with SendGrid. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to visit wpmailsmtp.com and check out our documentation page where we have step-by-step -step written instructions that can help you get started and learn more about what WP Mail SMTP has to offer. If you need any extra technical help, you can always go to our contact page and reach out to our support team.